good morning everyone today we are going to discuss meninges and cerebrospinal fluid or csf the following are the points which falls under the heading of meninges first one is the introduction and definition then cranial and spinal meninges spinal dura and epidural space arachnoid matter with subarachnoid space the part of the subarachnoid space that is the subarachnoid cistern pyometer processes of spinal pyometer and differences between cranial and spinal meninges okay so the first point is our introduction or definition so what is meninges meninges is the basically connective tissue dense irregular connective tissue okay which mainly encircles the or surrounds the brain and spinal cords so there are basically two type of meninges cranial and spinal meninges meninges has got three layers dura mater that is the outermost covering beneath the dura mater arachnoid mater the intermediate covering of the cns and the innermost covering that is known as pia mater which closely surrounds the cns okay here you should note that the meaning of the mater is mother or protective covering okay another name of the dura mater is pechi meninges another name of dura mater is pechi meninges okay so dura mater of the cranial meninges dura mater of the skull bone that we have already discussed in the along with the head and neck here we will discuss the dura mater of the spinal cord okay so this is the transverse section of the spinal cord okay first we will get orientation regarding this slide okay the main parts uh, shown in this slide this is the spinal cord this is the transverse section of the spinal cord the middle part is known as the gray matter <coughs> the outer part is known as this yellow is part this is known as white matter okay this h sub horn like part is known as gray matter outer part is known as white matter this is the central canal of the spinal cord okay this is the dorsal root of the spinal nerve and this is the ventral root dorsal root is sensory in nature ventral root is motor in nature both dorsal and ventral root unite in the region of the intervertebral foramen to form the trunk of the spinal nerve which is the trunk of the actually peripheral nerve which divide into ventral ramus and dorsal ramus ventral ramus supply the anterolateral part of the trunk dorsal ramus mainly supply the back of the trunk okay this is the bone of the vertebral canal that is the vertebral foramen okay this is the periosteum and this is the this is the periosteum of the vertebrae okay the space between the dura mater and periosteum of the vertebral foramen is known as epidural space epi means outside epidural space epidural space has got internal vertebral venous plexus here we can see the blue color structure this is the internal vertebral venous plexus this internal vertebral venous plexus is in communication with the vein of the posterior abdominal wall and vein of the posterior mediastinum of the thorax that is the esophagus vein and vein of the uh, tributaries of the inferior vena cava there is some clinical importance of this internal vertebral venous plexus whenever there is carcinoma or tumor is there in the <coughs> prostate breast okay uh, the metastasis of this uh, tumor spread via 
the tributaries of the uh, inferior vena cava and azygous vein into the internal vertebral venous plexus and thereby the cancer may spread to the bony part of the vertebrae this is the clinical importance okay that is the point number 1 okay now coming back to the meninges that is the dura mater okay so dura mater of the spine or spinal cord extend from the base of the foramen magnum to the we see in the next slide base of the foramen magnum to the level of the s2 vertebrae that is the part of the sacrum sacrum is made up of five vertebrae which in fact fuse with each other first second third fourth and fifth so dura mater extend from the base of the foramen magnum to the s2 vertebrae okay that is the extension okay in addition to that dura mater extend up to the level of the intervertebral foramen okay it fuse with the trunk of the spinal column okay and then it continue as a epineurium of the peripheral spinal lobe okay which exactly uh, the starting point from the internal vertebral foramen okay so that is about the dura mater of the spinal cord space between the dura mater and periosteum of the vertebrae is known as epidural space okay now come to the second layer beneath the dura mater lies the arachnoid mater okay we will understand the arachnoid mater first we will understand the arachnoid mater of the brain okay so here we will take some orientation this is the skull vault okay this is the dura mater there are two type of the dura mater two layers of the dura mater in the cranium endosteal layer and this light green that is the meningeal layer between the endosteal and meningeal layer of the dura mater within the skull bone there will be dural venous sinus okay beneath the meningeal layer of the dura mater there lies the arachnoid mater this pink is joint this suggests the arachnoid mater so arachnoid mater is loose membrane okay it is the loose membrane somewhat vascular okay loose transparent vascular membrane okay so this is the arachnoid mater okay it uh, Uh, follows the course of the pia meters okay but uh, not uh, strictly adherent to the underlying brain tissue okay arachnoid mater is traversed by various septa okay that is known as arachnoid trabecula okay we can see the septa which lies with the, uh, below the arachnoid mater okay so the space between the arachnoid mater and pia mater is known as sub arachnoid space okay can you see this red color line okay this red line suggests the pia mater okay so the space between the arachnoid mater and pia mater is known as sub arachnoid space and this sub arachnoid space is traversed by various delicate septa and this septa and the surrounding space is known as arachnoid trabeculae arachnoid trabeculae okay from the sub arachnoid space there will be protrusion of the arachnoid mater in the form of the villi okay after piercing the meningeal layer of dura mater into dural venous sinus for example this is the superior sagittal sinus okay so this projection inside the dural venous sinus is known as arachnoid villi arachnoid villi okay this projection is known as arachnoid villi okay the cell of the arachnoid villi is simple squamous epithelium okay mesothelium type of cells okay at some places arachnoid villi is thickened enlarged granulated okay so in that case the that type of arachnoid villi is known as arachnoid granulation okay arachnoid granulation so whatever the we see in this diagram is basically arachnoid granulation another name of arachnoid granulation is pecinion body pecinion body okay another name of arachnoid granulation is pecinion body what is the function of arachnoid villi or arachnoid granulation in the sub arachnoid space there is csf okay so csf has to drain has to drain inside the dural venous sinus for example this is the superior sagittal venous sinus 
Okay. So the function of the arachnoid villi or granulation is absorption of the CSF. It allow the absorption of the CSF from the subarachnoid space to dural venous sinus. That is the function. Okay. There is a tiny passage in between the cell of the arachnoid villi that allow the absorption or filtration of the CSF from the uh, this sub arachnoid space to dural venous sinus. Okay, so that is the point for the arachnoid matter. Okay, this trabeculated like appearance is also known as cobweb like appearance, spider web like appearance. Okay, that is uh, peculiar for the arachnoid matter and sub arachnoid space. Okay, so this is the arrangement of the arachnoid matter and sub arachnoid space for the brain okay now we will see the arachnoid matter for the spinal cord okay so here we see below the dura matter this dotted pink color line suggests the arachnoid matter okay it uh, completely encircles the spinal cord and laterally it extends up to the intervertebral foramen here you follow this line it extends up to the internal intervertebral foramen okay the same arrangement is there below between the arachnoid and pia mater, sub arachnoid space, arachnoid trabeculation. Okay, here there will be no structure like the arachnoid granulation. Okay, simply the sub arachnoid space is there. Okay, in next diagram, okay, here the sub arachnoid space of the spinal cord we can see. Okay, so the arachnoid mater dura mater along with the sub arachnoid space all they extend up to the level of the s2 vertebrae okay the sub arachnoid space of the spinal cord extending between conus medullaris and s2 vertebrae is larger than the routine space this larger sub arachnoid space inside the vertebral column is known as lumbar cistern okay this bluish color zone is known as lumbar cistern so lumbar cistern is basically larger pool of the sub arachnoid space of the spinal cord but between which two point between the conus medullaris and s2 vertebrae so this huge amount of the csf within the spinal cord is known as lumbar cistern so what is the peculiarity of lumbar cistern it allow the one procedure that is known as lumbar puncture, lumbar puncture. Okay, that is we have to withdraw the CSF with the help of the lumbar puncture needle from the lumbar cistern for the diagnosis of the certain neurological disease. Okay, this lumbar cistern is uh, more roomy or maximally enlarged in the region of L3 and L4 vertebrae. So the clinician or physician passes the needle in between L3 and L4 vertebrae it pierces the overlying structure for example supraspinous ligament interspinous ligament then it pierces the dura mater arachnoid mater and then it enters within the lumbar system with the help of the needle we can withdraw the csf then we send it for the pathological examination and thereby we can diagnose various related neurological disorder so this point you have to remember okay so first you have to describe the routine arrangement of the sub arachnoid space their structure arachnoid trabeculation arachnoid villi and granulation then you describe the special point for the spinal cord sub arachnoid space in the spinal cord is maximum maximum roomy in the uh, part of the spinal cord between conus medullaris and s2 in this area the maximum amount of the csf is there that is known as lumbar system okay sub arachnoid space also extend up to the posterior pole of the posterior pole of the eyeball okay third layer third layer is known as pia mater okay this is the tissue of the spinal cord <coughs> this is the white mater this is the anterior median fissure this is the posterior median sulcus we can see this red lining okay so this red line suggests the pia mater. Pia mater, what is the characteristic of pia mater? Pia mater closely invest 
pyometer closely invades the brain tissue. It follows the same curvature as of brain. For example, this is the pyometer of the cranial cavity that is of brain. So here we can see the pyometer follows the sulcus and gyrus. Okay, it strictly closely applied to the curvature and texture of the cerebral cortex. Okay, this is how the pyometer is attached. Practically in the dissection, we cannot separate the pyometer. Yes, we can definitely separate, we can definitely uh, identify the endosteer and meningeal layer of the dura meter. We can see the arachnoid meter, but we cannot separate it out the pyometer from the overlying underlying uh, brain tissue or spinal cord. Okay, so pyometer is intimately intimately related to the neurological tissue that is the characteristic there is definitely the space between between the pyometer and the uh, cerebral cortex or uh, neurological tissue okay but practically not identifiable that is known as sub pile space okay so that is the arrangement of the pyometer okay now here we see what is the further extension of the pyometer so pyometer has got four type of the extension okay this is the routine arrangement of the pyometer okay there are four type of the processes from the pyometer from the arachnoid meter to the posterior median sulcus of the spinal cord the extension of the pyometer is known as sub arachnoid septum okay sub arachnoid means below the arachnoid meter okay sub arachnoid septum that is the part or process of the pyometer extending up to the posterior median sulcus that is the one okay this is the anterior median fissure of the spinal cord so the part of the pyometer extending from the extending from the surface to the anterior median fissure okay so this thickened part anteriorly is known as linear splendens linear splendens that is two third one denticulate ligament denticulate ligament denticulate the word is related to the tooth okay so denticulate ligament is the modification or process or extension of the pyometer from the lateral part of the spinal cord to the to the dura mater here we can see this is the dura mater okay so this lateral extension of the pile process is known as denticulate ligament okay fourth one <coughs> from the terminus of the spinal cord which is in fact known as conus medullaris thin septa thread like septum is extending that is known as phylum terminali phylum terminali phylum terminali okay so what is phylum terminali it extends from the tip of the conus medullaris to tip of the coccyx this is known as phylum terminali okay Phylum terminali is again of two variety. Phylum terminali internum, which lies within the lumbar system. Phylum terminum externum, which lies outside the lumbar system. Okay, the length of the phylum terminum internum is more, approximately 15 centimeter. The length of the externum is less, approximately 5 centimeter. Okay, so there are total four modifications of the pyometer in addition to the usual arrangement posteriorly. Subarachnoid septum, anteriorly linea splendens, laterally denticulate ligament, and inferiorly in this vertical section we can see phylum terminally, phylum terminally internum and phylum terminally externum. Okay, so what is the function of this pile process? Okay, the function of this pile process. Pyel process means modification of the pyometer. It anchors the it anchors the spinal cord exactly in the middle of the vertebral canal. Okay, it does not allow the movement of the spinal cord because this pyel process, this pyometer, will hold the spinal cord properly in between the vertebral foramen. Okay, and all the three layers dura mater arachnoid mater and pyometer all they extend up to the level of the intervertebral foramen okay up to the level of the formation of the trunk of spinal lobe then it continue with the epineurum of the 
peripheral nerve okay so this is about the pyometer okay here we can see this is the pyometer of the cerebral cortex so far we have discussed <coughs> introduction then cranial and spinal meninges spinal dura and epidural space arachnoid matter and subarachnoid space pyometer our next point is then we discuss processes of spinal pyometer our next point is difference between cranial and spinal meninges so what is difference between cranial and spinal meninges there are three difference dura mater of the cranial meninges here it divide into two layers endosteal layer and meningeal layer while dura mater of the spinal meninges has got only one layer that is the meningeal layer only because already outside the meningeal layer of the spinal cord there is periosteum of the vertebral canal is there so there is no need of endosteal layer of dura mater that is the one dura mater of the cranial meninges has got folds for example fox cerebri fox cerebelli etc while dura mater of the spinal meninges has no folds there are no modification of the dura mater of spinal meninges third difference absence of epidural space in case of cranial meninges here we can see this, for example this is the skull wall this is the endosteal layer of dura mater there is no space between the endosteal layer of meninges and skull wall so epidural space is absent in case of cranial meninges while epidural space is present in case of spinal meninges so what is the structure in case of epidural space of spinal meninges there is presence of internal vertebral venous plexus that we have already discussed okay then next point is subarachnoid cistern what is subarachnoid cistern subarachnoid cistern is the modification of the subarachnoid space okay so what is the subarachnoid space first we discuss that subarachnoid space is the space between the meningeal layer of the dura mater and pia mater okay it is filled with csf it has got different structure for example arachnoid trabeculation arachnoid villi arachnoid granulation now what is the definition of subarachnoid cistern okay you note down it <coughs> subarachnoid cistern is the large pool of the csf okay at various part of the brain for example in front of the brain stem surrounding the cerebellum around the base of the brain okay around the lower part of the spinal cord okay in this area the plenty of amount of the csf is there okay because of the roomy space what is the reason for this roomy space because of the uh, divergence of the two layer of the meninges arachnoid mater and pia mater because of this large divergence between the arachnoid and pia mater the more room is created for the maximum collection of csf so simply speaking subarachnoid cistern is nothing but it is the large space of the uh, large subarachnoid space okay uh, different type of the subarachnoid space we'll discuss in the next lecture okay thank you